Hey guys, today I'm filming my monthly makeup declutter for May and I want to apologize if the lighting or the camera angle is off. We did move the bookshelf and the chair out of this room to put into Landon's new room and the two office chairs I have are a little bit taller than the previous chair so I had to prop my tripod up in some things to try to get a good angle so please bear with me while I'm working that out but I figure this is a pretty easy video to film. I don't think I got rid of as many products as last month but still a decent amount of things so let's just jump on in. I am decluttering two face primers. The first one is the Herborian Extra Matte and this does have a nice sort of silicone texture. I like the way that it feels in the skin. It does help keep me a little bit more matte, but it's nothing super crazy, but it also isn't that gluey type of consistency. This has a pretty strong baby powder floral type of scent, and I really don't like that. And I think, you know, because I'm pregnant, I might be a little bit more sensitive to scents, but I do have other primers to work through in my collection. This was something that I had gotten for free with some also purchased, so I am gonna pass it on to someone who won't mind the scent. And then I was recently sent all of the primers from Smashbox, which was really exciting, and I, this month, have been testing out the Correct Anti-Redness Primer. I do think that this is a nice product. It does have a green tint to it, but it is very easy to blend out. I do think that it did a decent job of correcting for a primer. You wouldn't want a primer to be as pigmented as an actual liquid color corrector. But you can definitely, at least in person, I can even see it on my wrist here, that green hue. And this does give a little bit of hydration as well. I do think it is a fine primer, but I do have a lot of primers in my collection and it's not necessarily something that I need. It makes a difference, not a huge difference. And obviously a full coverage foundation is going to cover up redness better than a color correcting primer. So I do think this is a nice product. If I had fewer primers, I would probably keep it. Or if it was a mini, I probably would use it up. But because it's a full size and will take me a while to get through, I would rather pass this on to somebody else. Next, I have one brow product. I was lucky enough to be sent a bunch of Benefit brow products to promote their brow search. And I was sent one of their newer products, the Gimme Brow Volumizing Pencil in the shade 2.5. This is a wooden style of brow pencil, which means it will last you absolutely ages, comes with a spoolie on the other end. This does show up on me, but not enough. You guys know that I go a little bit intense with my brows and I would just rather spend my time using the goof proof pencil if I'm wanting something thicker and it will fill in, give more color a little bit quicker. And then I also, of course, love the Precise My Brow Pencil for drawing on the front and shaping my brows. And I did use Precise My Brow in combination with the goof proof and with this Gimme Brow and it was fine just a little bit too subtle. I just know it's gonna take me, again, a really long time to get through and I just am not loving it. I don't really get the volumizing claim here. I don't know where they're coming from with that. So I would say this is just like a standard wooden brow pencil, not something that I want to spend the time to use up. Next, I have a couple of eyeshadows. The first is the ColourPop Super Shock in Mint For You. It's a metallic finish. This is a beautiful color. I think it's really pretty. I did like it when I wore it recently, but didn't blow me away. I've had it for a little bit in my collection, and I think I'm just slowly gonna end up getting rid of all or most of my ColourPop Super Shocks this year. They used to be a huge love of mine, and they're just not anymore. But I think this is a beautiful mint color. It's opaque, I would recommend it. I just don't think I need it. Next, surprisingly, I'm gonna be letting go of one of my Tarte Chrome Paint Shadow Pots. I absolutely love this formula. So sad that they're not really around. The stock that Tarte has left goes on clearance all the time. And this was a limited edition 
purple color called Unleashed. And you can see it's a purple with some blue in there as well. And I really liked the look that I made with this recently. I thought it was pretty, but I just have other purples that I prefer. And I never naturally reach for this. It's something I have to make myself use. And it's such a good product. I would much rather pass it on to someone who would use it. And then another product I was lucky enough to get in PR, the Lavender One palette from Lawless. Super pretty palette. I really like this color here. This is a really pretty shimmer as well. These two mattes perform nicely, but the more purpley mattes, they did not show up very well. I'm not really surprised by that. I know a lot of brands have a tough time and I was building and building and I could not get them to look more opaque or look less patchy. And even the shimmers in here, they're not metallic, they're just shimmers, which, you know, was still nice, but I definitely prefer more of a metallic shimmer shadow and that's just not what you're getting with this. So while this is not a bad palette, it's not incredible and I don't see myself again, naturally reaching for this over some of the other things that I have. And lastly, I wanted to declutter a backup I had of the Urban Decay Wild Lash Mascara. I'm using one right now. And this is a very wet, very thick formula. It's a bit of a thicker brush and I have to be very precise when I'm applying it or it can make my lashes really clump together. And it's pretty easy for me to get it on my lid. That happens with a lot of mascaras, but I don't usually have that problem. I like wet mascaras and I don't have like a, a clumpy problem for the most part. So this mascara is just a little too finicky and I feel like I can get it good on one eye and then the other eye looks a little bit of a mess. I do follow it up with more of a separating lengthening mascara, which definitely helps, but I have a lot of mascaras in my collection. I don't need to hang on to this backup, but I will use up the one that I am working on right now. But I think that someone else would likely really love that. Another mascara I wanna pass on is a little mini of the Sky High mascara. I just used up a full size recently. I do think this is very good, but I think I had a couple backups of this and now I just have one because I'm gonna be passing this on. I do think it's good. I have a lot of mascaras. I have enough mascara to last me throughout the end of the year. I do like this one for lengthening and separating, but I do have others that I like a little bit more. I know this is super popular, so I would love to give someone this combo because I do think that these would work really well together. I basically just have too many mascaras and would rather spend my time trying something new or something that I absolutely love. And lastly, I have some lip products. The first is what I'm wearing on my lips today. This is a mini Sigma liquid lipstick in the shade Awaken. It is a very pretty color, deeper than it looks in the packaging, but that happens, at least on me, with basically every liquid lipstick. This is a completely dry down liquid lip formula, and it's not the most uncomfortable. I do feel like my lips are sticking together slightly, and I think it looks pretty but it's not a color I'm gonna reach for a whole ton. I prefer something a little bit lighter and I don't use liquid lipsticks very much in general anymore. I have a few colors and formulas that I really love, but because this is something I've only used once, I would rather pass it. And lastly, I'm going to be decluttering three of the six Lawless Forget the Filler Tinted Lip Balms. I was lucky enough to get these in PR as well. So the colors that I will be passing on is Pink Marshmallow, which is the clear. And then the two darkest shades, this one is Lover and this is Sugar Plum. So these are very sheer balms. Some shades give you a little bit more color than others. And I knew that they were going to be sheer. They're called a tinted balm. I didn't think this was gonna be a lipstick product. And these are very firm though. It is like complete opposite of the Makeup by Mario Moisture Glow Plumpy Lip Serums or the Tarte Maracuja Juicy Lips. Any of those type of popular products right now, this is on the other end of the spectrum in terms of thickness, firmness, I should say. 
And because of that, you do need to go back and forth if you're trying to build up some color. And it almost feels like a bit of a matte balm or more of like a satin balm. It doesn't give a ton of glossy finish, a little bit, but not super duper. And it does give you like that similar cooling, plumping effect that's very subtle, like their glosses are. And I think that the shades are pretty. I'm keeping half of them. It's not a super hydrating product though. It's not something that I would use as a lip balm replacement. So I would say if you're interested, maybe get one shade. I do know some people like Samantha Marsh that really love them. But for me, I do not like them as much as I initially thought. I don't think they do a ton for the lips formula wise and they don't give a ton of pigment. So I would say pass on them, but I'm very excited to be able to give these shades to some friends so they can try the formula. And I am looking forward to using the shades that I kept a little bit more. Jumping in really quick because I wanted to declutter another product and I am hoping to give it to someone next weekend. So I wouldn't have it to share with you if I waited until next month. So this is the Super Goop Resetting Refreshing Mist SPF 40. My friend Lauren decluttered this to me. I really wanted it to work. It says you really need to shake it and I did shake the heck out of it and it still left my skin feeling greasy and it made my makeup break up or if I touched my skin the makeup would break up immediately. I had one time where it was okay but then two other times where it messed up my makeup and I was able to sort of kind of fix it but I just do not want to deal with that so I am going to pass this on to my sister. She has used this before and liked it and I think the one that she had had expired. So I'm gonna see if she is interested in it. If not, I'll pass it on to somebody else that can hopefully finish it before the end of the year. And it's something that I wouldn't want to use without makeup because then I would just use a regular SPF. But let me know if you have tried one before that doesn't leave a greasy residue. And it is something that does have a decent scent so make sure your eyes are closed like of course but like definitely but yeah I was disappointed in this I haven't really heard people say that it breaks up their makeup and maybe I just wear too much makeup or spray too much I'm not quite sure all I know is that it did not work for me so I was able to let go of 12 makeup products today which I think is not too bad I know these monthly declutters might not be as fun as like a full collection declutter but it's hard to get rid of a ton of stuff every month but I feel really good about the decisions that I made I do not think any of these products will be sneaking back into my collection and I'm hoping I can find some friends that will really enjoy them. I would love to hear your thoughts if you try these products and I would love to know what things you may have decluttered recently. Thank you all so much for watching this video. Please like, comment, and subscribe and I'll talk to you soon. Bye guys.